Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for my first ever full on proper in art 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. You see, those prototype reviews, they were just a warm up. This is the main event. We are of course taking a look at none other than the Joker based off his appearance in The Dark Knight. Specifically, the deluxe rooted hair two pack version. Now, I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, seeing as though this is InArt's first release and a very premium one, they wanted to give us something a little bit more special. So instead of going with a tried and true rectangular box, they've gone with something else entirely. It's absolutely huge and it's a very unique shape as well. It kind of feels more akin to a statue box and yeah, that makes sense. Queen Studios, InArt, this is right up their alley. The surface at first glance is simple but under closer inspection, there's more than meets the eye. There's this metallic brushed finish, and on the surface, there are some printed patterns. Those patterns make up some hexagons when you look at them from a distance. And what's so special about those hexagons? Well, they're the same patterns that you can find on Joker's shirt. A very nice Easter egg in art. I love this packaging. Up front, it says the Dark Knight trilogy with a Batman logo. And then, of course, the Joker. It does flip open. It's a magnetic closure, just like a statue box. And on the inside, a big honk and hunk of foam plus some Velcro straps. If you're thinking, wait a minute, where's all the warnings and legal info? Well, it's on the side of the box, up top, Platinum, because this is part of the Platinum line, A001, it's their first figure. Then we have the Dark Knight trilogy and all the other info down below. I was wondering where this was hiding, up on top, the InArt logo. You know what? So far, I'm really enjoying this unboxing experience. It does feel very special. Up top, InArt and a black envelope. What's inside the envelope? Some literature, which we will go through a little bit later. We do have two Velcro straps holding the foam blocks together. And yes, I'll be quiet for some figure unboxing ASMR. That's the first time I've ever had to do Velcro straps for a 1-6 scale figure, and I cannot wait to lift this lid. So let's get that done. Now on the top layer, we have both jokers and their head sculpts come packaged separately. If you're wondering, ooh, why do they do that? Well, the hair is pre-styled by an artist before it leaves the factory. So they didn't want it rustling around in the box, getting all crushed and smooshed. So they popped it in these canisters to protect the hairstyle. And it seems to have worked because first in hand impressions of the head sculpt, super impressive. As for the bodies, we'll just take a look at one now and the other later on. First in hand impressions of the body, super heavy and very premium. If you're curious as to what's on the next layer, well, I'm pretty sure you can guess. It's the diorama display base and the jail cell. So what we are going to do now is get all of the Joker's accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. Starting off with the smaller of the two display bases first. Now we will assemble the diorama one because I'm pretty curious to see that myself. This one is circular and at first glance it looks pretty simple. It's quite tall and up top some tile flooring. But don't let first impressions deceive you, it's got some tricks up its sleeve. We do have some proper recessed grout lines and it is filthy. There's dirt and grime everywhere, plus washes in the crevices. Whoever the mob hired to mop their flooring, you wouldn't want to call them. Around the front, a Dark Knight logo, and around the other front, the Dark Knight Joker. Because there's no crotch grabber, you can display it either way. You may be wondering, ooh, how do you attach Joker to the display base? No crotch grabber couldn't be all that stable. Actually, it is. Smack bang in the center, some magnets. So when you pop Joker on, he snaps in position. So you can have him facing this way or the other way. It's up to you. 
Also, you can have one foot on the magnet and the other one off for posing. Some people asked in my prototype review, hey Justin, how secure are the ankles? Well, the ankles are really sturdy. So if you're worried he's going to topple over, I'm putting a lot of pressure on him to try and tip him forward, and he's not really wanting to go anywhere. So no, no Michael Jackson poses for Joker. You're not gonna one day walk in the collection room and he's leaning all the way forward, like I said, very sturdy. His Glock is made of real die-cast metal. The top slide can move forward and back, it's spring-loaded, and when you do, you can peep some teeny tiny bullets. But of course, if you want to see them better, you can. Remove the magazine and they're right up top. They're also real metal. And for some reason, in art went all out, this Glock is officially licensed. You probably can't read that on camera, but it says officially licensed product of Glock. And then on the other side, all of the accurate markings. Which I don't think is something Hot Toys have done. Let me know if I'm wrong down below, I'm sure you will. The Smith & Wesson gun also has all the accurate markings and even a fire select switch on one side. You can fold out the stock, plus, you guessed it, this thing is made of real metal. You can slide this piece back, spring-loaded, of course, and remove the magazine, it sits in there really securely. Up top, some proper metal bullets. If you're wondering, ooh, how does this compare to the Hot Toys gun? Well, the Hot Toys one was okay, but it's made of plastic and there are no markings. For some smaller but equally as cool accessories, we get a knife and some handcuffs. The knife is made of plastic, but the blade is extendable and it's very shiny and metallic. It's also made of quite thin plastic, so please be really careful. The handcuffs are made of metal though, and yes, they can open. There's even some little teeth on these outer pieces, so when you open them, they feel like real handcuffs, just shrunk down to one six scale. One pose that I'm sure a lot of people are going to try out, in including me, is the grenade pose. How could you not? It's iconic. So luckily he comes with the grenades. It does have a bunch of strings attached to a ring, which you guessed it is alloy. I'm trying to find different ways of saying real metal. The grenades themselves also alloy. We have some printed details and markings on the grenades and each sculpt is different. Plus, the little shiny rings are, you guessed it, metal. So being attached to these strings and dangling, even though they are quite heavy, I think this hardware can take the weight. Yes, even though those strings are quite thin. Now, he does come with a full deck of only Jokers. Of course he does, it's the Joker. You really wouldn't want to play cards with this guy, because nobody would win except for maybe him. Now, all the cards are printed, as you would expect, and they're all different as well. I'll save this for when you get yours. You can go through them all and pick your favorite one. Which, luckily, isn't something you'll have to do with the head sculpts, because this is a two-pack. You get to display both of them. On the left, we have a subtle, devious choker grin and some smudged eye makeup above his right eye, versus the one on the right that's a little bit more why so serious. I am so sorry I had to. I kind of see the right one as the mob scene joker for the magic trick, and on the left, the prison cell. Although you can mix and match, it's up to you. They both have rooted hair and moving eyes. Yes, I will show you how to work the moving eyes later on. Now, the paint application's incredible. The likeness to Heath Ledger, absolutely there, and the rooted hair is stunning. We do have multiple layers of rooted hair, and it's not just one color, bright green. We have green, we have some darker, dirty blonde, just like Heath had, and towards the roots, it's darker yet again. We also have some skin tone mixed in there. It's almost like they painted the head sculpt in full skin tone, then did the makeup over the top which I wouldn't be surprised, because in art it seems spares no expense. The skin texture isn't just painted though, it's fully sculpted and super HD. How about the other one, Justin? Just as good, I still see Heath Ledger. Do let me know which of the two sculpts you prefer, because I am really struggling to pick my favorite. This expression is more serious and a little bit more evil. 
So maybe, just maybe, I'm leaning towards this one. Now I know I said I'd show you the moving eyes later, but let's do it now. In order to activate the moving eyes, you remove this back hair panel and there is a single joystick. So of course, to move them, you simply move the joystick. You can go from looking up, being all out mean, to looking down a little bit more comical and whimsical, or even from one side to the other. Once again, just like everything here, the choice is yours. Let's be honest, as real as 1-6 scale figures look, there's always just one thing when it comes to figure photography that's an illusion breaker. And that's wrist pegs. Exposed joints, not very real looking. So when Inart said we're going to make the most realistic figures possible, they wanted to solve for that issue. And their solution, seamless forearms. For me, I love this, I'm so freaking happy. The skin texture is really well sculpted, it's 4K, not just HD. We also have a ton of paint on the fingers and even some paint on the palms. These hands are incredible. Not the first time I've used that adjective, but not the last either. We also have some sculpted and painted vein work. But if you're worried about posing, thinking, oh no, I'm locked in this position. Well, with these forearms, you are. But with these ones, you aren't. They have traditional wrist pegs. Well, almost traditional. There's a magnet on the end and a magnet in the hand. Plus, on those seamless forearms, magnets up inside, so it's all nice and secure. Now, when I reviewed the prototype, people said, oh, there's a key. That means it only goes one way. Actually, no. You can see that that's still a cylindrical peg port. That key isn't an actual key. It's just there to add a little bit more friction to back up the magnet. You can still rotate it fully and pretty much have it moving in any direction. The forearms are also fully sculpted and painted, even though they don't quite look as good in my opinion as the seamless ones. Those are the ones I'm going with on my just shirted joker. Now the sculpts for the gloves are on point. There's also texture and wrinkling, plus all of the hand sculpts are individual, meaning they haven't just copied and pasted and reversed the mold, they are unique sculpts from one side to the other. Even though they look similar, they aren't. I also dig the wrinkling, it makes them look like proper 1-6 scale gloves. Now of course, these are marked right and left, so you know where they're supposed to go. If you are wondering about the diorama display base though, yeah, I'm pretty curious to assemble that, so... Here we have it. Not yet assembled, don't worry, we're gonna put it together. It's relatively simple to do, as I'm sure you can gather. But the reason I have it laid out here in pieces is I wanted to show you how to get that done. And I did want to take a look at the pieces separately, just very quickly, before we put it all together. Around the front, a dark knight symbol with some cracks and washes in the crevices, so it stands out on the purple sub-base. But if you're thinking, oh no, I don't want this to be the front, I want to flip it around and have Joker peering through the jail cell. Well, luckily, you can, they thought of that. There's not only a logo on the front, but on the back as well. Now, this one is different. Rather than being embedded in the surface, it's raised. And of course, it says the Dark Knight and Joker. It is quite a sizable base, so make sure you have room in the collection. Then up top, my favorite part, the wooden flooring. Now you may be thinking, ooh, that's some good paint and texture, it's well sculpted. Actually, it's not sculpted, this is real wood. There are washes, there are stains and varnish, and you can see how thick that wood is. It's not a simple veneer, it's nice and chalky. And so is this thing, it is incredibly heavy, cause they didn't cheap out on materials here either, this is real metal. Down below there's some very thin bars and up top they're a little bit more sparse. It's also really well painted. There's dirt and grime and rust work all over the darn thing. It looks like if you touch it you get tetanus, but don't worry, you won't. It's all been properly treated. The final piece of the puzzle, the bench he sits on. This could have very easily been plastic, it's quite a simple sculpt, but... It's not, it's also real metal. Now this is quite heavy, so in the display when he's sitting on this, it should be nice and planted. Up top we have some pitting and dirt and grime, plus some schmutz on the edges. Maybe people have spilled something on the bench or maybe that's something else, I'll leave that to your imagination. We also have some rust work on the edges cause this is in a prison. It's not going to be in pristine condition. Alright, assembly time. It's rocket science. This is really tricky, so make sure you pay attention. 
Of course, it isn't. It's really simple. It's keyed, so it only goes one way. There's also that little foam circle in the base, so it should hold the jail cell bars nice and securely. Don't forget, though, wood is a natural material that shrinks and expands depending on your climate. So if it's a little bit tighter, just wait for it to warm up a little. As you can see, it pops in, no problem. The way you know it's in all the way is give it one final push and it'll sit all the way down. Which is exactly what Joker will be doing on his bench. I am so sorry I had to. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any magnets in the bench nor the display base, so how do you install it? Well, it's really easy. You ready for it? Blink and you'll miss it. You just pop it on. Now, seeing as though it is made out of metal, it's quite heavy. And Joker himself is also heavy, so when you combine the two, they shouldn't really slide around in the display. Although when you are posing up Joker, do be careful. You wouldn't want to slide this round too much, being made out of metal with a wooden flooring base, you wouldn't want to scratch anything. As far as diorama bases go though, this is gorgeous. I cannot wait to pop Joker in here and give you some more angles, which we will do, don't you worry. What we are going to do now, though, is get the Clown Prince of Crime, Joker, himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And the first word that comes to mind is... Whoa, what the hell, Inart? This thing is insane. Hot Toys, they're at the top of their game. They're making really cool and very realistic stuff but never anything quite as realistic as this guy. It literally looks like a shrunk down heat ledger in 1-6 scale. I'm kinda lost for words, which as you all know for me, that doesn't happen very often. So let's start with the basics, the body. It's all new specific to this figure. The proportions look like Heath with the broad shoulders, he's quite skinny, and he's got this sort of hunch forward. The head sculpt, even from a distance, is undeniably Heath Ledger as the Joker. Then the outfit, some of the finest tailoring I have ever seen. Plus, on top of that beautiful tailoring, it's very nicely weathered. This guy is quite dirty and grimy. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. Now, I've already ranted and raved about how good this sculpt is, but I can't help myself. I don't know what to tell you. I genuinely really like it. I found it pretty funny, though, when I reviewed the prototypes. People were saying, ooh, the prototype is good, but you just wait. Inart can't possibly deliver at this level of quality, not at a mass scale. As soon as the final one comes out, they're going to be terrible. There's going to be a huge dip in quality. But this is proof that that's not the case. It's just as good as the prototype, at least in my opinion. The hair is truly exceptional. The strands are really thin and quite wavy and curly, which is how they looked in the film. Now, if you're worried about installing the head sculpt on the body, don't be. It was really simple. The neck connector is magnetic, so when you pop it on, it snaps in there very securely. Wait a second, Justin. Why are we back here? There's nothing to see here. Go back around the front. We will in just a second. But I did want to talk about the coat. Now, to nail the coat, there is a checklist of things you have to do well. Starting off at the top with the choice of fabric. It's this suede-like textured fabric, and the color is on point. At least, I think so. It's not too purple, and it's not undersaturated either. You have to get the metallic orange lining right. Once again, a check. And you also have to get the dirt and grime in the seams. Something that Hot Toys missed with the DX11, but it wasn't missed here. You can absolutely see it, and it looks bang on to the film. The last one, though, is the tailoring. It has to be broad at the shoulders, but kind of tapered down towards the legs. And once again, a check, it does. You also have some wires along the bottom, so you can shape it however you want. Something that I totally forgot to do in my prototype review, and for that I'm sorry, is futz with the shoulders. You can bulk them up and make him look a little bit more hunched forward and broader at the shoulders, or you can push them down and make his neck look slightly longer. Speaking of his neck, it is visible. You do have to move around the collar and tuck it into the vest. Super easy to do. The tie is also adjustable. There's a metal buckle around the back. Now, having the neck at an angle permanently, I think is a good thing. 
because with that stoop permanently baked in, it's way more accurate to the posture that Heath used when he played Joker. On the inside of the jacket, you do have the place for the grenades, plus that metallic orange lining. You also have some magnets in the lapels, so no flyaways, they're always locked in position, they're not going anywhere. Underneath the purple jacket, you have the grey jacket, as you should. There's dirt and grime all along the edges, and the same thing can be said for the green vest. It is missing a button, but nobody freak out, that's accurate, it's how it should be. Then for the shirt, the pattern looks spot on, and the same thing can be said for the tie. Before you ask, yes, this is all removable, you simply slide it off and away you go. But when you do pop it back on, trying to achieve this won't be easy. What do I mean by that? Well, you can see his jacket cuff and you can see the cuff of his shirt. So there are multiple layers that you'll need to slide through, maybe use some tweezers to help you get that done. Also, the buttons on the outside of the jacket sleeves, they're faux buttons, so they can't actually do up. The same thing goes for these buttons, and these buttons, plus these ones. There are some press studs that keep it all close together. Coming down to the pants, they are pinstripe, and even though you can't tell super easily, there is some weathering. Also, the gold chain is real metal. Then coming down to the shoes, but wait, no, no, before we get there, there's socks, they're printed, and they're accurate. The shoes are really nicely sculpted with a ton of texture. The laces, though, aren't real, like the DX11. Does that bother me? No, because these laces are properly in scale for 1 6 scale. Versus the DX11, they look slightly bulky. On the underside of the shoe, they're nice and smooth. Justin, come on, bring the figure back out here. Yes, I will, but for the next thing I want to show you, we're going to need this, the instruction manual, which leads me on to the literature packet that we discussed earlier. In this metallic envelope is something special. Actually, two things special. We have a faux movie ticket that you can tear if you so choose with some info on it and the Dark Knight Joker on the outside. And on this black sheet of paper is a letter from InArt and Queen Studios. Feel free to pause to read in either language. You can do that in your own time. The instruction manual, though, is super comprehensive. This might be the biggest and most detailed instruction manual I've ever received with any figure. It shows you points of articulation, it shows you how to switch parts and pieces on, it even goes so far as to break down in 3D the circular display base. The reason I needed the instructions? Simple. Joker's grenades, I wanted to see where to put them. Now the grenades, like we discussed in the accessory segment, are metal, but luckily they're not super heavy. They are quite weighty, but they do sit in the little straps quite nicely. Also, I dig this little hook up the top, so if you're not using this string, you can holster it in position. That way it's not dangling down all loosey-goosey. Also, when you close up the jacket, it's more bulky on one side, but not too much. So, I could totally see a world where you keep them in all the time and every now and then bust them out for a grenade pose. Going over articulation, do bear in mind, this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be a touch more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a magnetic neck connector and a ball joint at the bottom. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, hindered slightly by the multiple layers, there are quite a few, totally to be expected. Going forward and back, and I really like how close they can get to the sides of his body. You do have a butterfly joint that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going the full way, and a 1-6 scale wrist peg with a magnet up on top. The torso will crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee, and of course a double ball peg which is super sturdy down here at the ankle. Before I show you this body, I quickly wanted to show you what it looks like without the head sculpt on. Now you can see there's a magnet inside and a key, because the neck connector is keyed. There's a little notch around the front and a magnet up on top. Now I'd love to be able to just pop this on and away I go, but you do have to work with the collar and kind of slide it around the neck. It will take some time, but when you do it, it's not that tricky. But of course, that's made even easier by the magic of video editing. But in all seriousness, the easiest way I've found to do it is to flip up the collar, tug on the collar at the same time as pushing the head sculpt in. 
I'm sure you can figure out your own method, but that's what worked for me. I also loosened the tie just a little. Now there's still some fotzing to be done, but I would suggest tucking the collar of the shirt under the vest to keep it tamed. You don't want it flying away and looking goofy. Now the head sculpt I really like. I love the other one, but this one is starting to win me over. I haven't messed around with posing yet, but oh, I cannot wait. Around the back, you can see the construction of the vest is on point. We've got this satin-like fabric with some detail on the surface, and a little strap down below. There's a real metal buckle. It's adjustable. If you want to tighten it, you can. If you want to loosen it because you're going crazy with your posing, you can also do that. Just tug on the buckle and it will loosen right up. Back around the front, I know, I know, we've seen all of this stuff with the jacket joker, we've seen the vest, we've seen the tie, the shirt, the metal chain, and the pants. But what we haven't seen, not properly, is the body. Now that we've ditched those outer bulky layers, you can see the body is really well proportioned. It looks super real. I was worried that he was going to be too skinny, too scrawny, but... I reckon this looks spot on to the prison scene in the film. He does have defined shoulders and traps, plus he does of course have those seamless forearms which you will see in a minute. Now underneath the vest he also has some suspenders. Technically you can undo the press studs but please be really careful, press studs they are notoriously fragile with 1-6 scale figures. As you can see though there's some diamond prints on the suspenders. And I don't know about y'all but I didn't even know he was wearing suspenders in the movie. As the saying goes, you learn something new with every 1-6 scale figure. Not the saying? Oh, that's a shame. It should be. Now, if you roll up the sleeves, which you can do, because there's a teeny tiny metal clasp you can undo to flip up the cuffs of the shirt, and now you can see his entirely seamless forearms. Once again, fully sculpted and painted. If you are wondering, okay, I like the seamless, but what if I want to go joint it? Well, it's pretty simple. You remove this one, it's on there with a magnet, and you pop on the other one, you guessed it, with magnets. Now that we have this one on there, we have a normal wrist peg. Now unfortunately, he doesn't come with any hands that look like this to pop on these wrist pegs. You have to use the gloved ones. Not necessarily the end of the world, but still, I would have liked to have seen hands like these. And for those counting, yeah, that's my only complaint on this entire figure. I quite literally don't have any more. So there's not really any need for a pros and cons segment. Yeah, a round of applause is required. Thank you, Joker. Oh, that was my worst one yet. My humor is definitely getting terrible. People stop encouraging me. His pants are the same as the other Joker. They're also a Velcro closure for his fly. Not that you'd really need to do anything with that, but if you want to take the pants off and switch the body for whatever reason, you absolutely can. Down below, he has the same socks as full suited Joker, and his shoes are identical. The sculpt and the paint applications, once again, really good. Going over his articulation, Necessary? No, not really, the body's the exact same, so let's breeze through this. The head sculpt, the same exact thing, ball joint down below, swivel and pivot. The arms will go up to there, but slightly less hindered, because less layers. They will of course go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, but this time no wrist peg, we only get a swivel. And you can see he's waving. We do get a crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot. The legs will go forward to there, and I do like when you bring the legs up for a sitting pose. His socks are exposed. They will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee, and lastly, a double ball peg down here for the ankle. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Inart, on the right, Hot Toys DX11. But I'm pretty sure you all could already tell that. For those screaming at your screen saying, Justin, don't you dare. Don't you trash that DX11. He's old, but he's a classic. Yes, he is old, and unfortunately, a little tired. A lot of people still consider the DX11 as the ultimate 1-6 scale Joker. Do I? 
No, I don't. The Inart one is way better. He looks literally like a shrunk-down miniature 1-6 scale real person. The proportions, way more accurate to Heath. He's got the broader shoulders, the skinny body, and the built-in stoop. The head sculpts are also superior, plus rooted hair is a massive win. Then we get to the outfit, which is perfectly tailored on the left, whereas on the right, it's very baggy. It's also completely unweathered on Hot Toys, whereas with Inart, it is filthy. Now, for some reason, I don't know what went wrong with the bathrobe coat on the Hot Toys one, but there's way too much texture and it literally hangs off him. Whereas, like I said with Inart, tailoring is on point. Also, the DX11 is shorter, so scaling compared to newer figures isn't really all that possible. Poor choice of words, perhaps. It is possible, it just doesn't look all that good. Whereas this, oh, this looks awesome. On the right, DX19, and of course, still in our Joker. Joker is slightly taller than Batman, but that doesn't faze me. This absolutely works. I cannot wait to display these two standing together in the collection. Does that all mean that he doesn't really scale well with DX12 or Armory Batman? Yeah, Kinda, he's a little bit too tall. Now, some people I'm sure will be perfectly fine with this, but for me, DX12 or Armory Batman pairs better with DX11. Versus the Inart Choker that goes well with DX19. It's like a fine wine pairing with a good steak. Now, that's not to say you can't do this, you absolutely can. Pose depending, this might look okay. Alright, back on track, another more modern figure, the updated 2.0. Two-Face, Two-Two, I'm so sorry. As you can see, he scales really well with Joker. But something about seeing him with his slightly baggy tailoring alongside the incredible tailoring by Inart, I'm kinda wondering, ooh, what would an Inart Two-Face look like? Hopefully one day they decide to tackle him as well. Maybe a two-pack with Harvey Dent, just saying. We will move on, I promise, but humor me just for one more second. For a super close-up comparison, does the Inart truly wipe the floor with the DX11 up close, not just from afar? Yeah, I think it does. Wrapping up on the Deluxe, Rooted Head Joker 2-pack by Inart from Batman The Dark Knight. Now, I'll try and keep this relatively short and sweet, because I'm running out of adjectives to describe how good this guy looks, because I've pretty much used them all. I've run the full gamut. Now that we're at the end of this video, though, do I like him? Come on, of course I like him, I love him. Where does he rank in terms of my figure collection? Well, he's very close to the top, if not my number one. I adore this figure. It feels super premium, almost unbelievably so. The hair is insanely well rooted and pre-styled, so no work has to be done by you. You've got the moving eyes, you've got the incredible tailoring, plus two separate bodies, the seamless forearms, the huge prison cell with real metal and real wood. I can go on, but you'll already know. So, if I was sitting here today trying to decide DX11 or Inart Joker, which way would I go? Well, the Inart Joker is the more premium of the two, and he comes with a premium price tag, whereas DX11 might be a little bit cheaper. But my friend Will has a saying, buy it nice or buy it twice. So, in this instance, yeah, I just straight up skip the DX11 and go with Inart Joker. It's my personal favourite of the two. I do have a review coming up for the Sculpted Hair version, so stay tuned to the channel. In saying all of that though, would I go so far as to say this is the best figure I've ever seen in 1-6 scale? Actually, yeah, kinda. I mean, it depends what your metric is. If you're measuring this by realism and by quality, this wins hands down. But if you're measuring it by shelf presence and accessories or anything else, then maybe not for you. Just because I find this thing absolutely intoxicatingly good, it doesn't mean you have to. I got my two-pack from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.